In addition to Media Studies 2.0, another theme that we'll be engaging with this week is the relationship between digital media and the treatment of non-human animals. Several case studies have been selected to really get you thinking and talking and debating about what are the media involved, why do they come about, who do they benefit, what are the ethical issues involved. You've got the pet cam, which can be strapped around the necks of cats and dogs and no doubt other animals, record footage of their journeys through your backyard and then upload it to YouTube. What about apps for apes? What is that for? What do you think about that one? And also, dog TV. This started in Israel and has taken off in other parts of the world, particularly the United States. And in 2013, I decided to do a little experiment to see exactly what kind of effect this would have on Tiffany when I leave the house. And on a recent trip to the Melbourne Aquarium, I noticed some very interesting efforts to adopt digital media in the interest of educating the public. And this raises the question, is this kind of interactive media likely to be effective? Or, with more and more of our everyday lives mediated through various screens, are we losing something? Have we grown apart from the non-virtual world, from the natural world? These are big questions with no easy answers. Now what I thought I'd do here for a few minutes is to reflect broadly on the nature and approach of the unit, with plenty of hints and tips thrown in to help ensure your success as you journey through the trimester. I'm going to do this by deconstructing the key concepts of the unit's title, Exploring New Media, Users, Settings, Implications. ALC 201 facilitates the development of critical thinking and communication skills, enhances in a practical hands-on way your digital literacies, and requires an openness to ways of thinking about the world that might be new, different, and at times perhaps even somewhat threatening to you. You should always feel free to question anything you disagree with, but the most important thing you need to do is get involved and engage with the issues up for discussion, and with each other. There is a lot of emphasis on exploration in this unit. This is embedded into its content and delivery, as well as its formal and informal assessment. But to sum up the key point, which is by no means relevant to this unit alone, the more exploring you do for ALC 201, the more you will get out of it. It's that simple. Set unit content will be provided during the majority of weeks, but you will ideally find yourself contributing to and expanding on all of this content through your own digital travels. Always be sure to keep up to date with your weekly readings and the various other materials posted on Cloud Deacon. Take notes as you reflect on the issues, theories and examples explored, and find your own to bring to seminars or raise in online discussions. You are also expected to regularly check your Deacon email throughout the trimester, so make sure you get it redirected to another account if you don't check it directly. One of the first questions you need to consider in this unit is whether or not exploring new media should even be called exploring new media. I had some doubts expressed to me about the phrase new media, and I myself wondered whether it was worth upgrading to digital media culture. What do you think? Is new media a completely redundant phrase? How new is digital media to you and the people around you? Does your network of friends and family constitute an army of tech-savvy troopers who create, upload and disseminate user-generated content on a daily basis? Do they even want to? And if not, what do they think about people that do do this? It might be argued that wider social and cultural discourses about social media, such as those frequently reinforced in mainstream news media, still betray considerable anxiety, if not absolute panic, about the implications of the online world for everyday life. 
Whether or not you agree with this perspective, digital media continues to be represented in many places and in many ways as something new. The category of new media is in many ways problematic, for what is old and what is new in a world of constant and rapid technological innovation and change is a somewhat arbitrary distinction. Likewise, determining what is old and new is inherently subjective and relied on people's varying contexts, access and competencies. The term new media is still widely used in scholarly publications, just do a quick search for ebooks and journal articles on the library catalogue. Although is this reason enough to keep using the term? Even if I don't always use the inverted commas when identifying new media, and I will often use digital online social media synonymously with this, keep in mind that new media is a contested and intentionally provocative term. Another point that cannot be stressed enough is that even if we do accept that there is such a thing or a category of things that we might term new media, this should by no means be taken to suggest that old media is in some way redundant, disappearing or unimportant. As we'll see in the weeks ahead, digital media and more traditional forms of media production and dissemination often coexist side by side, and what might be considered new can become old very, very quickly. Research on digital media has increasingly pointed to a blurring of the once clear distinction between media producers and audiences. Scholars contend that the internet, particularly its latest articulation in the form of Web 2.0, has given birth to a pervasive participatory culture in which ordinary people create, upload and distribute their own content rather than relying on large media organisations alone to develop television programs and the like for them to sit back and passively consume. Just when I started to get used to using the term viewer, combining viewer and user, several years ago when I was researching digital children's television culture, the phrase prod user started to come into its own, and we've also got prosumer now that it's often frequently talked about. As William Merrin notes in one of your readings, recent developments in the media environment lead many scholars, including himself, to quote, fundamentally question the continuing value of the concept of the audience, end quote. What we think of these as terms isn't important. What is crucial is that they identify significant shifts in the contemporary media landscape and how people understand this. How extensive these shifts are is something you might like to think about in relation to your own experience. Our focus on users in this unit will take on a number of forms, depending on the particular settings we are exploring at different times. Yet in many ways, the primary and most important user you will be focusing on is you. You will need to think critically, creatively and carefully about how you construct your identity online and this will become a direct focal point for us next week. Not everyone is particularly thrilled, for example, about the idea of uploading images of themselves on the internet and this is perfectly fine. There are plenty of ways in which you can build an online presence without spreading photos of yourself all around the world. Most importantly, always keep in mind how you are using digital media, whether it be for educational purposes, for socialising or just for entertainment, and whether it be on campus, at work or at home. Settings can be geographical, temporal, spatial, institutional, virtual and so on. We'll be dealing with all kinds of settings throughout the trimester. As you can see in the unit timetable, we'll be analysing how digital media is utilised and or implicated in, for example, museums, legal systems and the porn industry. We'll be looking at how new media impacts the home, the workplace and recreational settings. This is also a good place to point out what the unit is not about. ALC 201 is of course not the only Deakin unit that concentrates on digital media and for that reason both content and assessment will not address, or at least not directly, the study of digital media in areas that are the focus of other undergraduate units that you can enrol in. This particularly relates to the fields of journalism, public relations and filmmaking. We will inevitably address issues that are highly relevant to these industries and disciplines and we will be engaging with media products of journalists and filmmakers, but for obvious reasons our broad focus in the weeks ahead can only encompass so much. We could never hope to comprehensively cover digital media given the wide variety of roles it plays in everyday life.
A crucial element of this unit involves us critically examining digital media's positive and negative implications, social, ethical, legal and otherwise, in various settings and for various users. A very important point that needs to be constantly reflected upon is that just as media forms themselves undergo a perpetual process of change, so too do the ways in which society makes sense of these transformations. It only takes a quick Google search or a skim through a newspaper for commentaries on digital media to discover that there are a number of competing ideological discourses about new media that are reinforced and resisted on a daily basis and are immensely influential on collective understandings of technological change. We often characterise these as utopian discourses, which optimistically focus on the opportunities and benefits that the virtual world provides people with, and dystopian ones, which emphasise the perceived disadvantages and dilemmas that arise from the increased over-reliance on digital technologies and the simultaneous hazards of surveillance. With some reflection, you might find that your own views and values lead you instinctively to approach digital media, or at least certain examples, from a somewhat dystopian or utopian perspective. One of our goals in this unit is to hold these two perspectives in balance, to identify and acknowledge both the potentialities of digital media and its limitations or dangers. David Gauntlet writes that, quote, media studies should not simply sing in praise of particular kinds of technology, any more than it should be gratuitously critical of everything it sees. That's why we need an intelligent and sophisticated media studies, which helps us to properly and critically understand the media of today. While this is certainly the case, the design, structure and delivery of a unit on digital media like this one can only achieve this balance with the help of its students, you. Having strong opinions about new media and new media users is fine, but you might find that you need to keep an open mind in relation to some topics in order to ensure that judgement doesn't impede your understanding.